Welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. Today we're talking about the student loan debt crisis and why it's going to be America's biggest black eye 20 or 30 years from now looking back. So this is my personal opinion. I was actually, I don't want to say a victim of the student loan debt crisis, but I obviously had student loans just like most other grads. So in this video, I want to talk about three things and three sections to this video. The first one is going to talk about the big picture. So we're going to look at the big numbers and the big statistics that are contributing to this student loan debt crisis. The second part is going to give you some examples of average debt per degree. I'm going to focus specifically on medical degrees and a couple of uh, other degrees as well. And then in the third part of this video, we're going to talk about the conclusion and its impact on the economy. Uh, from today moving forward. So getting right into it, let's talk about the total number of student loan debt outstanding um, as of July of 2019. So right now we are looking at roughly a total of 1.56 trillion, okay? That's trillion with a T, not billion. This is 1,560 billions, okay? So put, to put this into context, that's $521 billion more than all of the United States credit card debt combined. And that's $200 billion more than all of the auto loans in the entire United States combined. So put that into perspective and let that sink in. These are student loans for education. So let me label this student. This is credit cards and this is auto, okay? That's how much bigger student loans is than those two huge massive industries. So let that sink in for a second. So now, how many people does this affect? Okay, the number of people that this affects is 44.7 million Americans have some form of outstanding student loans. So that's roughly 14 of every 100 people that you see, okay? So if you go to a sporting event and there's 50,000 people in the stadium, let's say you're at a Browns game. Actually, Browns are sick this year, so there's gonna be like 70,000 people at this Browns game, but let's just use 50,000 for easier numbers. Um, this sporting event is gonna have 50,000 people there. 7,000 of those 50,000 that are in the stands have some form of student debt in one form or another, okay? So ultimately, this is a huge number. It's affecting a huge part of the population. So let's talk about who this really affects. It's not just the younger generation, but it's also the older demographics as well now. I think senior citizens are actually going back to school more to finish their degree. And it's doubled and tripled in that category. But let's focus on the people that are looking for jobs in this market currently. This is basically your new grads or people that are still in school all the way to mid-level professionals. So ages 18 to 34, they have an average of $37,000 in student loan debt, okay? So $37,000 is not a joke. That's a good chunk of money for a good portion of the population of the United States. Whether you live on the coast, down south, or Midwest, 37 grand is a lot of money. So what are some things that you can do with this $37,000? So instead of having this ball and chain around you, you can put a down payment on a home with this money. That's a down payment basically on a $185,000 home, or if you wanna put 10% down, that's a down payment on a $370,000 home. You can pay off a car with cash. You can even buy like a Tesla Model 3, I think for like 37 grand if you get the base model. Uh, you can save for a wedding. You can do a bunch of things with this money, but instead, people are paying this back over years, if not decades. So number four, this one is kind of interesting and it's maybe a sign of things to come. 11.5% 11, 11 of people are either 90 days or over or just delinquent or in default with their loans, okay? So this makes you think, if basically one out of 10 people who have student loans, so if you take that 44.7 million number that we just talked about, that's basically 11.5% of all those people. Um, so for easy numbers, let's just say one out of 10. One out of 10 of those people is basically in default. So that makes you think, what else are they defaulting on? 
So when you let your student loans go, obviously you may be letting other things go to collections and it's absolutely destroying your credit score. So what are the long-term effects of all this on the um, everyday student or the everyday uh, consumer of student loans? So finally, what we have here for the big picture is basically the average payment. So you may be wondering, what does all this cost? And it's roughly $393 a month. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but if you go back to my examples of investing in a Roth IRA or just investing the difference, whether it's buying a car, whether it's investing for your future or your retirement, I did the math on this. $393 invested every month with a gain of 7% from ages 22 to 65 will end up being just over $1.25 million, okay? So I know that's about 43 years of investing, but that's still nothing to laugh at. So this is basically holding people back from investing that difference, whether it's in the stock market, whether it's in your Roth IRA, and realizing this kind of an income potential over those 40 something years. So let's move on to the next part of this video. What I wanna talk about now is some of the average debt that certain degrees have once they finish their schooling. So I'm gonna talk about four different degrees here and the average debt per degree, and I do actually have a couple of points for each one. So stick with me here, because the next section is actually gonna go into how this affects the economy in general. So we're gonna talk about med school grads. So here's med school, I'll give it a little uh, MD. Uh, we're going to have pharmacists, I'll call it pharma, we'll do a little uh, cross, and everyone who watches my channel know, knows I'm the best artist on YouTube. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about lawyers, so I'll do the little scale, so here's the little scale, oh that's bad, that's really bad, right, that's good, that's a scale, right, okay, and then finally we'll talk about dentists. I'll call it dental and here's a tooth. It's a really bad tooth. What do you think medical school graduates have in terms of average debt? I'll give you a second to think about it. It's $196,000 in student loan debt when they graduate. If you wanna do pharma, what do you think pharma graduates with? 166. If you wanna do lawyers, what do you think the average law school debt is? It's anywhere from 100 to $200,000. And then finally, dental school grads, this is the winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> we are looking at $285,000 in average loans, okay? The nice thing about these professions is that, knock on wood, all these people will get a job within their specialized field and they'll be making six figures and hopefully they can still pay these amounts down. However, you have to realize these people are graduating essentially with a mortgage. So I don't know about you, but where I live in the Midwest, $285,000, that's a really nice house. You know, plus a 20% down payment, you're looking at a nice little McMansion there, okay? I do have a personal story about a woman who was actually trying to be one of my tenants at one of my rental properties. Um, so this property was in Akron, Ohio. It's south of Cleveland and she was a resident at Akron General, okay? So residents at Akron General, they make about 50 to $60,000 per year. She had $310,000 in medical student loans. So think about how that's gonna affect her for probably 10, 15 years to come, even with her six-figure salary. So hopefully her spouse, um, she did have a couple kids, hopefully he was making good money, I don't remember exactly what he was making, but that is a lot of money to graduate with in terms of uh, loans. The thing is, with pharma and with lawyers, these are two fields that can easily be automated tomorrow, okay? I don't mean literally tomorrow, but I mean in the future. So if you're a pharmacist that works at a um, local drugstore or a local grocery store, these people can easily be automated. Same thing with lawyers. Um, there's AI that is doing a lot of legal work uh, to this day. So imagine graduating with all this debt and your job being eliminated. Obviously, there's more branches to both pharma and you know, law, but all it takes is one automation for you to be irrelevant. Uh, dental, you're always gonna need a dentist, and uh, my wife's uncles are both dentists, so knock on wood, they stay in business. 
So with that being said, I just wanted to paint a picture of how some degrees are graduating with ridiculous amounts of student loans. And let's talk about how this affects the economy in the next section. Okay, so we're gonna talk about how this actually affects the economy and the overall population. And again, this mostly has to do with the United States because this is where these statistics are coming from. So the first one is the slowdown in consumer spending, okay? So basically consumer spending on goods and services is what we do on a daily basis. It's basically the circulation of money and the lifeblood of the economy, okay? So when we're transacting with one another, with the small business down the road, with the gas station down the street, with the shopping mall, this is all circulating money and providing jobs for people. So when people are strapped with that $393 average payment, some is more, some is less, and the principal, principal amount of the loans actually weigh heavily on your conscious, people are less willing to spend on goods and services, thus slowing down the circulation of the economy. The second one, delay home ownership. Okay, I'll draw a little house here with the window and the door. So this delays home ownership. So a statistic that I found was that 30, 36% of heads of household ages 24 to 32 owned homes in 2014 versus 45% in 2005. So that's almost a 10% drop in basically what is 14 years comparing those two different statistics because people, they're more inclined towards renting because they have this big burden. Not only is their debt to income ratio too high because of the student loans, People saw what happened in 2008 with the recession, and then they also have these student loans, which is kind of turning them off from owning real estate. So this is why I think multifamily apartments and multifamily investing is doing so well, because it's almost a recession-resistant product at this point due to this fact alone. So number three, let's talk about entrepreneurship. So people aren't uh, starting small businesses or taking risks in terms of entrepreneurial endeavors. The reason for this is, is because they're too busy paying off their student loans, okay? So when they're paying off their loans, they have no grassroots or no um, cash to start their business from their own money without having to take on loans, which again, it's kind of like a chicken and the egg. They already have too many student loans, so a bank is probably not willing to lend to them in the first place. So I actually looked up some statistics on this and how this is affecting small businesses throughout the country. Ultimately, there are 70 less new small businesses per county, which is a decline of 14.4% over two different time periods. And small businesses are actually responsible for 60% of the net employment in the United States. So when you see someone working for a landscaping company or the coffee shop down the street, or just you know a small business, think of local small businesses as you drive up and down the road, there are 14.4% less of those being formed every year um, because of student loans. So think about that, you guys. It affects employment, it affects um, the circulation of goods and services, and it affects the delay of home ownership overall. So to conclude this video, I do wanna give my personal um, anecdotes of what I've seen uh, from student loans, and these are my personal thoughts. So going back very quickly to how it affects the economy, I kind of think that it's more of a, so here's my other artist, artist skills, let's see here. Here's a belt buckle, here's feet, okay, this is a person. It's, it's more like a ball and chain, okay, rather than a bubble. So everyone talks about student loans being, you know, this big bubble, it's not gonna be a bubble because it can't pop, okay? Student loans are very difficult to get rid of even through uh, bankruptcy, okay? They're almost impossible to get rid of even if you declare bankruptcy. So people are always gonna have this ball and chain around their ankle or this monkey on their back that they can't get off. Um, so ultimately, it's just gonna be a drain on the economy, in my personal opinion, rather than a bubble. Secondly, and this is something you know, near and dear to my heart, it's just my personal opinion, you don't have to agree with it, but starting families. So basically, um, people are going to be scared to start families because kids cost money, okay? Kids are not cheap, and people are going to delay starting families along with home ownership, and I think that's ultimately going to lead to a population decline. 
Maybe population decline will be good. I don't know. Uh, I'm not an economist or a demographer. Um, but ultimately, I do think that people, just from what I've heard and seen, are definitely delaying starting a family or having kids because of their student loans. So if you got anything out of this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you shared it with one friend. Again, this video is just to get you thinking about the big picture, the numbers, how it affects the economy, and what certain people graduate with in terms of debt. And imagine being someone who actually has a bachelor's degree who graduated with that $37,000 in debt and they became a barista or a job that has nothing to do with what they studied and what their life is going to be like for the next 10, 15 years paying off those loans. So just start thinking a little bit about other people, you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments below if student loans have affected you. As always, thank you so much for watching. Share the video with one friend. And most importantly, have a prosperous day.